New telemetry from 3i Atlas reached Earth, and what we thought was a catastrophic breakup is now revealing something far more extraordinary. For the past week, headlines from the Minor Planet Center and press releases from the European Space Agency have told us the same comfortable story. Interstellar visitor 3i Atlas undergoes catastrophic disintegration. They want you to see a dying rock, a fragile dirty snowball from another star system that simply couldn't handle the heat of our sun. But science isn't about what you're told to see. It's about what the data refuses to hide. To call 3i Atlas a comet feels almost quaint at this point. This is not a tumbling snowball on a one-way visit. The object passed its closest approach to Earth on December 19, 2025, skimming past at a distance of 269 million kilometers while moving at a blistering 220,000 kilometers per hour along a hyperbolic trajectory. By traditional standards, it should be leaving the solar system, fading into the void. And yet it isn't fading in the way we expected. It isn't crumbling, it isn't chaotic. Every fragment, every jet, every plume tells a story that defies everything we thought we knew about interstellar objects. The mainstream narrative immediately classified it as a fading interstellar wanderer that had survived the solar encounter only to shed its outer layers in a spectacular but ultimately natural display. The general public blinked and the story was seemingly over. But those following the telemetry closely, the raw data pouring in from the European Space Agency's JUICE mission, Subaru Telescope in Hawaii, and other ground-based observatories began to notice something profoundly unsettling. When a comet breaks apart, it follows the laws of entropy. It's chaotic, messy, creating a string of pearls or a diffuse cloud of dust that follows a predictable gravitational curve. But 3i Atlas isn't doing that. The initial mass loss readings were extraordinary. At the peak of the flyby, this object was shedding 1.8 million kilograms per second. That alone would be catastrophic for a cometary nucleus of its estimated size. According to standard physics, an object losing mass at this rate should have seen the entire nucleus vanish within 48 hours if it were a standard icy body. But here we are, days later, and the radar cross-section of the core remains monolithic, dense, and intact. But it wasn't just the amount of mass being ejected, it was how it was leaving. Sun-facing jets formed, structured, coherent, and consistent, extending hundreds of thousands of kilometers into the void. This is not random outgassing, this is mechanical orchestration on a scale that challenges conventional cometary physics. Observations from the Subaru telescope, processed to remove the glare of the coma, revealed jets that were rigid, maintaining their orientation even as the nucleus tumbles. These jets are locking onto specific vectors as if controlled by an internal system. The answer to how this is possible lies in what is being shed. When a comet outgasses, we see volatiles, water ice, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. But spectral analysis of the material ejected from these jets shows something impossible. The spectral lines from the JUICE mission's latest flyby data showed ionized nickel iron and a sudden spike in magnesium. These aren't the ingredients of a comet's crust. These are structural materials. The quantities suggest a core density and material strength far beyond what a loose rubble pile could support. For comparison, previous interstellar objects like Oumuamua were enigmatic in their shape and acceleration but lacked a metal-rich composition. 3i Atlas is materially, structurally, and behaviorally distinct. Imagine a ship shedding its heat shield. Imagine a multi-stage rocket discarding its spent boosters. If you look at the debris field through a Doppler filter, you see that the fragments aren't just drifting away due to solar radiation pressure. They are being ejected at specific intervals with specific vectors. Standard sublimation is a leak. This is an eviction. The mass loss is controlled. By shedding the outer layers, 3i Atlas is reducing its moment of inertia, preparing for a maneuver that no piece of natural ice has ever attempted in the history of our solar system. But the most intriguing detail comes from the pattern of fragmentation itself. When amateur astronomers first processed the Subaru imagery, they observed what initially looked like a conventional breakup. Sections of the outer layers appeared to separate from the nucleus, but closer inspection revealed something else entirely. If you plot the position of the 14 largest fragments detected by the Mount Graham International Observatory, they don't form a line. They form a sphere. A string of pearls fragmentation, like what we saw with Shoemaker-Levy 9, happens because of tidal forces pulling an object apart along its orbital path. But 3i Atlas is moving too fast and is too far from the sun for tidal forces to be the culprit. So why would an object fragment into a perfectly symmetrical shell? In military logistics and deep space theory, there is a concept called sensor swarming. If you wanted to scan an entire planetary system in a single pass, you wouldn't use one camera. You would deploy a fleet of subprobes to create a synthetic aperture, a massive distributed eye that can see everything at once. 
The fragments did not drift away randomly, they formed sectors, organized streams, and in some cases appeared to pivot in coordination with the core's rotation. The object was not breaking apart, it was deploying. The debris field isn't a chaotic cloud, it is a control dispersal, a sequence of events that maintains structural integrity while adjusting spin. As 3 Atlas passed Earth, it didn't just break, it expanded, it increased its surface area for observation. The rotation of the object has shifted dramatically over just 48 hours. Any standard cometary body would tear apart under such stress. Yet 3i Atlas remains intact. Outer layers are shed selectively, jets are vectored, and the nucleus stays cohesive. Something is stabilizing this spin. Ground-based spectrographs reported precessional modulation, oscillations in the jet output that are synchronized with the object's rotation. This is not random sublimation. This is controlled thrust, adjusting the object's spin and maintaining a precise orientation in space. And then there are the electromagnetic pulses detected by JUICE. These surges are not incidental static. They are structured, high-frequency bursts, often occurring in precise synchronization with spin-up events of the nucleus. Every time 3i Atlas accelerates its rotation, there is a corresponding electromagnetic pulse. Conventional cometary physics cannot explain this. Sublimating ice does not broadcast on these frequencies. Friction with the solar wind does not generate synchronized bursts. These signals hint at internal mechanisms or a high energy process within the object itself. If you want to hide a signal, you hide it in the noise of a catastrophe. The mainstream narrative focused on the chaos of the fragmentation, but the Breakthrough Listen Project's Green Bank data tells a different story. Between December 22nd and December 24th, as the debris field expanded, the radio spectrum around the object didn't just get noisier, it became structured. We're talking about the hydrogen line 1.42 GHz. This is the universal frequency, the watering hole of the cosmos. For decades, SETI has told us that if an extraterrestrial intelligence wanted to be heard, this is where they would broadcast. But 3i Atlas wasn't broadcasting a greeting to us. It was coordinating. Independent analysts who managed to access the raw telemetry before servers were locked down noticed a pattern. Every time one of those fragments drifted to a specific distance from the main core, a burst of 1.42 GHz energy was detected. It wasn't a continuous hum, it was a packet, a pulse. These weren't random spikes of static from solar friction. They were synchronized. Fragment A pulses, then fragment B responds 0.4 seconds later. This is low latency networking. 3i Atlas isn't a single object anymore. It's a distributed array. By deploying these pieces, it has essentially built a radio interferometer in our own backyard, millions of kilometers wide. To vector jets, maintain spin, and emit electromagnetic pulses simultaneously at hypervelocity, 3i Atlas requires an internal power source far beyond what passive solar heating can provide. The conventional comet model fails to account for this energy budget. Every calculation points to an internally generated force or system, one capable of responding dynamically to environmental stresses and maintaining the integrity of the nucleus. In short, the object is self-regulating, deploying mass and adjusting orientation as if aware of the forces acting upon it. Adding to the intrigue is the color shift. On approach, 3i Atlas had a deep cosmic red hue typical of space-weathered objects. Now, as of the latest observations, the spectral signature is shifting toward green. The official explanation is the emission of diatomic carbon. They say the sun's ultraviolet rays are breaking down organic molecules on the comet's surface. It's a great story. It fits the textbooks, but the physics don't work. Diatomic carbon is highly volatile. For it to glow this brightly, the object needs to be getting hotter. But 3i Atlas is moving away from the sun. Its surface temperature should be dropping rapidly, yet the green intensity is increasing. This suggests that the ionization isn't coming from the sun, it's coming from the object itself. In high-energy plasma physics, a green shift can occur when an intense electromagnetic field ionizes the surrounding gas. If 3i Atlas is engaging an ion drive or magnetoplasma dynamic thruster to accelerate, the exhaust would interact with the leftover debris shell it just shed. The green glow isn't the death rattle of a comet, it's the engine plume. The fragments it deployed aren't just drifting, they are being used as a propellant medium. By ionizing the mass it just threw off, the object is creating a plasma wake that it can push against. And here is where the story takes its most troubling turn. Just weeks ago, scientists were openly speculating about artificial traits in 3i Atlas. Avi Loeb, known for pushing the boundaries of conventional thinking, suggested the object might be an interstellar probe, potentially deploying a solar sail or revealing technology at perihelion. Breakthrough. Listen aimed their radio telescopes in anticipation of a signal. The excitement was palpable. The narrative of possible extraterrestrial artifact was alive. 
Fast forward to today. The flyby has occurred. The object behaved exactly as theorized. Jets vectoring, spin stabilizing, metal rich plumes deploying in a structured manner. Yet the public statements have pivoted entirely. Now it is a natural outgassing event. The artificial hypothesis has not just been downgraded, it has vanished. Leading voices that once championed open minded inquiry into the possibility of techno signatures now insist on conventional explanations. The raw telemetry, the oscillating jets, the electromagnetic pulses, these are being repackaged as random, explainable phenomena. This is the coordinated withdrawal from speculation, a sudden retreat into standard models, and the suppression or smoothing of anomalous data. Data that previously indicated jet vectoring, spin stabilization, and synchronized electromagnetic pulses is now being averaged, presented as random or chaotic events. The shift from public science to national security interest happened in the span of 24 hours. When an object behaves like a rock, you publish a paper. When an object behaves like a machine, you get a phone call. On December 19th, the most powerful X-ray telescope in human history, the Chandra X-ray Observatory, was pointed directly at 3i Atlas. This was a scheduled observation. The logs show the exposure was successful. The data was transmitted back to the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, and then nothing. Usually, fast-track images of interstellar visitors are released to the public within 48 hours to drum up interest and funding. We are now well past that window. When independent journalists reached out for the data, they were met with a wall of bureaucracy, calibration errors, software glitches, incomplete processing. An internal leak from a researcher suggested that the X-ray signature wasn't a glow, it was a point source. In astronomy, a rock shouldn't emit X-rays unless it's being blasted by high-energy solar wind, and even then it should be a diffuse, hazy reflection. But if 3i Atlas has an internal power source, a compact nuclear reactor, or high-energy propulsion drive, it would show up as a piercing, localized dot. By withholding the X-ray logs, the establishment isn't just processing data, they are sanitizing a discovery. But where is all of this leading? As 3i Atlas speeds away from Earth, it is heading toward the next decisive chapter in this saga, Jupiter. The rendezvous with the solar system's gravitational heavyweight promises to stress the object in ways that may reveal its full nature, exposing behaviors that can no longer be disguised. Current projections place 3i Atlas within 52 million kilometers of Jupiter in the coming weeks, a distance astronomically close and tightly monitored by every capable observatory. Jupiter is not just a planet, it is a gravitational crucible. Its immense mass dominates the outer solar system, and any object passing this close will experience tidal forces far beyond those encountered near Earth. For a loosely bound comet, these forces are catastrophic. The expected outcome is fragmentation, a string of pearls of debris stretching across space. But if 3i Atlas is indeed a structured, metal-rich body with internal stabilization, it might survive this encounter intact. Observing its response to Jupiter's gravitational pull is like performing a cosmic stress test, a litmus test for natural versus engineered integrity. Recent trajectory corrections have shown that 3i Atlas isn't just drifting, it's steering. A natural comet's path is altered slightly by outgassing, but the wobble in these jets is too precise. The object's trajectory seems fine-tuned to hit the edge of Jupiter's hill radius, the exact boundary where the planet's gravity takes over. If 3i Atlas survives without further fragmentation, the rubble pile theory is dead. If it maintains its structural integrity through that gravitational shear, we aren't looking at a rock. We are looking at an object with tensile strength that defies geology. It's a hull, not a hill. Why Jupiter? Why risk a close pass with a gravitational predator? To an interstellar probe, Jupiter isn't just a planet. It's a physics laboratory. Jupiter possesses the strongest magnetosphere in the solar system, a massive rotating dynamo that emits intense radiation and radio waves. If you were a visitor from another star system and you wanted to understand the fundamental physics of this neighborhood, you wouldn't look at tiny rocky Earth. You would look at the king. The debris shell 3i Atlas shed near Earth wasn't just propellant, it was a shielding layer. By stripping away its outer mantle, the core has exposed its internal sensors to the Jovian environment. As it passes through the magnetosphere, it's likely performing a massive data dump, scanning the magnetic field, the radiation belts, and the subsurface oceans of Europa and Ganymede. And here's something that should concern everyone paying attention. Orbits don't lie. While the main core of 3i Atlas is slinging toward Jupiter, three of the smaller fragments have stalled. They have shed enough velocity to be captured by the sun's gravity. They are transitioning from interstellar trajectories to stable orbits within our inner solar system. They didn't just break off, they stayed behind. As we speak, three objects from another star system are settling into the gravitational pockets of our solar system. They are silent, they are dark, and they are perfectly positioned to observe us. 
After the Jupiter encounter, 3i Atlas will gain a massive boost in velocity. It will become a hyperbolic escape object racing toward the constellation Gemini at over 250,000 kilometers per hour. But before it leaves, we expect one final event. If the subprobes it deployed near Earth are indeed sensors, they will need to transmit their findings back to the mothership. On its way out, the object will likely orient its high gain axis back toward the inner solar system, collect the signals from its swarm, and then beam a high energy transmission back toward its origin point. This is why the current silence is so significant. The establishment is waiting, they have pre-positioned the deep space network. They have the square kilometer array in Australia on standby. They know the call is coming, the silence isn't because there's nothing to hear, it's because they don't want us to know they're listening. We are watching history unfold in real time. Yet the authorities present a sanitized narrative, smoothing anomalies into acceptable patterns, suppressing high-resolution telemetry, and reframing extraordinary behavior as mundane cometary physics. The raw data exists. Independent analysts, amateur astronomers, and open-source researchers can continue to track, analyze, and decode what 3i Atlas is deploying. The object may leave the solar system, but the questions, the evidence, and the intrigue remain. 3i Atlas is the third, Oumuamua was the scout, Borisov was the comparison. This is the mission, the encounter at Jupiter is the climax. After that, the object belongs to the stars. But the three fragments it left in stable orbits, they are still there, they are silent, they are dark, and they are waiting. The question isn't whether this was a machine. The question is who sent it, and what did it find out about us. Keep your eyes on the raw data. Don't let the silence become the final word.